This right here is a spline, which is pretty much a straight set of grooves that go around a diameter. Now shapes like this can be really difficult to manufacture. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you a really nifty and easy way to put these types of shapes into parts, and it's called rotary broaching. So what is rotary broaching? Well, rotary broaching is a precision manufacturing method in which you use a special type of holder that spins that allows you to put complex types of geometry into parts really easily and really quickly. Pretty much any lathe or any mill can use this type of holder. Now, you have external rotary broaching and you have internal rotary broaching. So on our Tornos GT32 here, I set up external rotary broaching. Now, external rotary broaching has a few caveats to it, so I want to go over them so you can understand how to set it up. So the first thing I want to cover in rotary broaching is a question that I used to get asked a lot as an applications engineer. Why do you need this holder? Why do you need to spin the brooch? Why not just hold the brooch in a static holder of some sort and crush the shape into the part and wrap it out? Well, technically that could work, but when you use a rotary brooch tool holder to alleviate the tool pressure of just crushing the whole form in there in one go, a rotary brooch is actually cocked at a one degree angle, which means as the tool rotates, it's coming in and out of the cut. I guess to explain this well, here, you know what? Imagine this tape is your rotary brooch, right? Come here, we're gonna, we're gonna, get, we're gonna, we're gonna use tape as, a, as an example here. So imagine this tape is your rotary brooch, okay? To alleviate the tool pressure, the brooch is actually cocked at an angle, which means only the top part of the brooch is cutting the part as it spins around. The tool, as it spins around, is coming in and out of the cut. Now this does two things. It, it alleviates the tool pressure, but it's also part of the reason why it's so precise. If you took the whole form and tried to crush it onto the part in one go, it would be a lot more tool pressure and it would actually form a way less precise shape. And that's why it works so well. All right, now enough of this tape example. Let's get on to other stuff. All right, so as far as setting up a rotary brooch goes, it's actually pretty simple. The most important thing is that your tool's on center. So I just told you that your tool's at a little bit of an angle. Now, let's say if this was center, right? If you put a longer tool in there, you're gonna progressively get further and further off center. So some rotary brooch tool holders are made to be adjustable. So if you look at this external holder I have here, you can see that they gave me a special tool that's meant for centering alone. And how you center this is, you simply measure your brooch's height and you scribe a line on the centering tool. You then put that in your machine and you indicate it in. So this is all fine and dandy and everything, but the truth is, a lot of times on a Swiss machine, you won't have the room to center your tool like this. So, you kind of have to do the old school method. And the old school method is you break your tool holder loose and you slowly jog your machined part into your brooch until you feel the play of the holder completely go away. At that point, you'll know you're in contact and you just tighten your two screws up. This is not the recommended way, but sometimes you just have to do it. Life's not perfect, I think we all know that. So, it's good to know these, uh, I don't know, backup plans. So that's how I had to center my external holder. Now, when you look at my internal holder, you'll notice it's not adjustable. Okay, so this is my internal broaching tool, and you can tell I can't adjust the center line. So that means that both my brooches have to be the same length. So I have a brooch here for a hexalobe, and I have a brooch here for a hexagon. And they're the same length, which means I can use them in this holder. If you get a really long brooch, it will be more off center, which will not be good. You definitely wanna be on center when broaching. So yeah, center line is definitely your most important thing when broaching. Some of the other things I would tell you is that really anything over 35 Rockwell can be a nightmare. I'm not saying it's impossible. It can be done in some cases, but once you get to that level of hardness, it could be a lot more difficult to broach your part. And also, I wanna give a really huge shout out to Slater Tools. I've been using these tools my whole life at my dad's shop. We use them on our screw machines, our brown and sharps and all that. They've always worked really great. So if you get a chance, make sure you check them out because they really hooked us up for this video and I really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. To show you guys broaching from a better perspective, Jesse, my main dude right here, set it up on his mill so you can actually see it from a way better view. Now before we do it, I had to center the tool. So what Jesse did here is he made a 10 millimeter pin and he put a chamfer on it. Now what I have to do is I have to feed down my tool and center it like I did on the Swiss lathe. So yeah, nothing too crazy about that, let's do it. So what you're gonna actually get to see because we're doing it on a mill, is the one degree angle is actually gonna, it's gonna make the holder look like it's wobbling off center. It's gonna look really, really cool. And you're also gonna be able to see the brooch peel the material off. Now, neither I nor Jesse have ever actually broached on a mill before, so you're gonna be right there along for the ride with us. 
should be cool. So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Just watching how that pushes in there with so much ease is really fascinating because if you watch it in slow motion, you can actually see the wobble brooch is going around, only cutting on one tooth at a time. And that's why it's so easy just to pop that hexagon right in there. So one thing I didn't talk about over at the Swiss machine that I need to tell you guys is when you broach internally and externally, you put burrs into the part. If you look inside those holes right now, there's gonna be six mushed like flats that are inside the hole. So you wanna come in with your drill and pop those out. It's kind of important you do this because you don't wanna hand your customer work that has all these hanging burrs on it and stuff like that. So Jesse was nice enough to know that was gonna happen and program the drill to come in and clean it up for me. Kind of feel weird right now. I feel like I'm stealing all your thunder. This dude did all the work. So I want you guys to know that our mill dude is awesome. He did tell me everything to do. Don't, don't do that. Why are you don't, all being nice right I know, now? humble pie over here, I swear to God, every time. Let's put the OD spline on now. So as you can see here, we rolled up some burrs on this DVF 5000, but that's because we didn't have an undercut. If you look at the Swiss GT32's part, I made an undercut, so when my brooch actually formed into the undercut, my chips just flew off. Not too big of a deal, but here we're going to have to go back in and rerun our tool and clean it up. So rotary broaching is a super cool technology. The way it rotates, comes in and out of the cut is super fascinating to me. You know what it kind of reminds me of? <laughs> so that was, um, that was the longest five seconds of my life. <laughs> If you wanna see a behind the scenes vlog of us shooting that minigun, make sure you hit that join button down below. We post exclusive content just for our members. Well, you can also chat with us in our Discord. So if you wanna get that exclusive content that's just for our members, make sure you hit that join button down below. <laughs> Bye.